What's up, people? Joe Winko here, your favorite Hawaiian guy, and here's my next episode of Joe Winko Talk. Now, as much as I hate to say this, what I'm going to be talking about in this episode is another dark, dreary, and morbid topic, and it's it's kind of scary too. Like whatever, it is it is kind of scary too. But um, first, I want to say that there's been like a lot of storms going on in Wisconsin. And the power kept going out in my house over and over again, and that just made this whole thing scarier, even. But what it is, is there's this documentary on YouTube, it's called Satan in the Suburbs, and it's from year 2000. And I have the link in the description, but just letting you all know, it's really scary. It even freaked me out, and if it freaks me out, then it's really creepy. It's really scary, then, if it freaks me out, even. So, um... What it was about, it's a crime documentary about this 17-year-old boy named Ricky Casso, a.k.a. the Acid King. Well, that's what it said about him on Wikipedia, that his name was the Acid King because he was a drug addict. And um, he murdered his friend in the woods, and his friend who he murdered was named Gary Lowers. And uh, here's his picture. I'll show it to you guys right now. Here it is. So, what had happened was, there were four boys who went out into the woods, and um, they started a fire in the woods, and they were just hanging out in the woods, but they were also getting high off the drugs, too. Um, what kind of drugs were they taking? Let me just double check. I have the Wikipedia page loaded up. So, they were getting high off of... I believe it was Angel Dust or PCP. I honestly don't know what the hell that stuff is because I don't do any of that. I'm straight edge, just letting you all know. And um, what ended up happening was uh, they, Ricky Casso, he stabbed, Gary, he held Gary Lowers down and stabbed him to death and he like tortured him to death. They said, the documentary states that, uh, Gary died really violently, and on Wikipedia, it's even stating that, uh, I'll have the link to the, a link to the Wikipedia article in the description, it's, like, saying that, I think it's, situation started into violence, Casso suggested that they should use, alright, so Casso and, uh, so Ricky and Gary got into a fight, and what it says that, um, like, one of the other boys that they were with helped hold Gary down while Ricky was stabbing him, and that's, that's absolutely horrible if that's true. That's what I, that's what, I, what it said in the Wikipedia article, but that's absolutely horrible if, it, if that was true. But they did, Ricky Casso did kill Gary Lowers, though, and, um, what happened... And, like, the motive, though, kind of was because apparently Gary stole drugs from Ricky Casso. Because the documentary states that Ricky Casso was a drug dealer, that he was selling drugs around the area. This all happened in a town in Long Island, New York. So then, um... So he stabbed and tortured Gary to death. Then they left him in the woods. And no one even reported Gary missing at all. He was a... Mostly because he was kind of a troublemaker, he was also a runaway too, and not even his parents reported him missing, and I thought that was really sick and really messed up, because even if your kid is a runaway and a troublemaker, you should still report them missing, like, if they haven't came home in a while, like, that's really wrong. But, um, after the boys sobered up, now this is absolutely sick, what they did next, they started showing his body off to everyone, like Ricky Casso was, like showing his, the body off to everyone, because he was bragging about how he murdered Gary Lowers. And he was doing this for like two to three weeks before he was actually arrested. And um, that's, that's just sick. And people are actually going out in the woods and seeing the body and everything. But... Um, Eventually, a few weeks later, the police got a call from a, an anonymous call from a girl saying that Gary Lowers was murdered and that his body was buried in the woods by Ricky Casso. And 
The police didn't believe her at first because no one reported Gary missing and they didn't even know anyone named Gary was missing. And they thought it was a prank call, but eventually they went out there to investigate and they found his body in the woods and uh, they knew that Ricky Casso killed him. So they arrested Ricky Casso, they arrested two of his other friends, but um, here's a picture of Ricky Casso. I must warn you, it's kind of creepy. It creeped me out, but here it is. Oh, that face, it's so creepy. And actually, while the, while the storm was going on, while the storm was going on and when the power went out, I got so freaked out because I thought every single time I'd turn around, I'd see his face and I'd get freaked out. But come on, like I'd seriously be afraid of a ghost of a Satan worshipping 17-year-old boy who does drugs. Please. But then afterwards, um, they sent them to print, they sent them to jail and uh, before Ricky got his trial, he hung himself in his jail cell and he committed suicide, but then uh, the other two boys that he was with out in the woods, none of them got charged with anything at all, and they were allowed to go and get set free. And I thought that was really messed up, because I really thought they should have gone to jail too, because they did have something to do with his, mur his murder. They were accomplices in the murder. They, they uh, didn't report it, they didn't try to stop Ricky, because there were two other boys. They could have e easily saved Gary's life, but they didn't. And in my opinion, I honestly don't believe that those boys deserve to be out of jail at all. I still think they should be in jail today, because they, they didn't do anything about it, though. And, um, it really freaked me out, because in the documentary, they were stating that it was all because of Satan worshipping. Like, they kept bringing up Satan worshipping over and over again. And I believe Ricky Castro, I believe he actually did do Satan worship. And they believe that it was the devil, that the devil was involved. I honestly do not believe in the devil at all. I do believe that people are evil for random reasons and do really bad stuff, but I don't believe in the devil or anything like that. And what it really goes back to is the drugs. Like, because all the boys were all high on drugs during the murder when it happened. And it's sad how the parents never reported Gary missing. I mean, because even though he was a drug addict, a troublemaker, it doesn't didn't mean he deserved to be violently killed and, and his body, body left to rot in the woods. And it seems like no one even felt bad for him at all, either. Well, I felt bad for him, but no one else did. And it's, it's really sad and it's really messed up. All this happened back in the 1980s, just letting you all know. I should have stated that earlier now that I think of it, but it doesn't matter. 1984, in the summer, Long Island in New York. But, um... What got to me the most from the documentary was the reenactment of Gary being killed. Like, I just kept, after, a few days after I, in the days after I saw that documentary, what stuck with me was, like, his screams and cries for help the whole entire time while he was being brutally murdered. Because they were, they were going into detail what happened to him. They also said that his eyes were gulched out, and... That's really messed up. I mean, even though he was doing drugs, and even though he stole drugs and did a lot of bad stuff, he didn't deserve to die like that. Those kind of boys, those kind of people need help. They don't need to suffer like that. But it's really sad, because sometimes you really can't help people like that at all. Well, that is how it is. So, yeah. And, um, to get back to Joe Inko talk and everything, I really want to find happier stuff to talk about in Joe Inko talk, because, you know, so far I've been talking about so much depressing and morbid stuff, but, you know, it seems like that's all that there is online nowadays, that, I mean, that's all I find nowadays, so the whole, the whole way I found this documentary, because it was in my recommended videos, because I watch a lot of crime documentaries, so, yeah. I'll find happier stuff to talk about. Maybe I should watch more episodes of Jerry Springer or Judge Judy. <laughs> that Those are always funny. But also, my horror movie, Friday the 13th Part 2, is still on its way. I only have a few scenes left, and I only have to film the last few scenes, and they're on their way, because I already have like a lot of scenes done, but I only have a few scenes left, and it should be coming out soon. I've just been really busy with work. It should either be out by, oh, I don't think it's going to be out by this week, probably next week or the week after, because, like, there's only a few scenes left, but there's a lot I have to do in them, 
So, yeah, they're coming soon. And my, uh, my horror series, The Rising Dead, I've been typing the scripts, but I haven't started filming anything with that yet, but I will start that soon. And don't forget to subscribe to my Walking Dead channel, The Walking Dead Joe Winko. I'll have a link or an annotation somewhere on this video, because I actually posted two new videos there, and none of them got enough views at all, and I want them to get more views. It's basically a channel of me talking about The Walking Dead, but I was also talking about the Scream series also, so yeah, make sure to check that out. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, because I'm actually starting to post stuff on there now. I'll have the link in the description. So that's it. So don't forget to like, don't forget to comment and share your thoughts on everything I talked about in this video. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and follow me on Twitter. And yeah, that's it. So. Peace out, people.